Come on! Psychiatric Association considered homosexuality a mental disorder. That's right. Somebody with homosexual uh, tendencies that was with hom- that was a, 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 a practicing homosexual, they were mentally ill. That's what the American Psychiatric Association considered them to be mentally ill. But they changed their view under the pressure from the gay lobbyists which are demon-controlled, in my opinion, okay? So psychiatrists considered homosexuals to be mentally ill until 1973. So so what do we do? We've got the mentally ill dictating how to run our country today. Help us. God, help us. Come on. we got mentally ill people dictating to us how we're going to run our country. Because according to the APA, they are, if they're homosexual, they, are, they were insane. They were mentally ill. They had mental disorders. Well, we know what it is. What is mental illness? It's demons at work in many cases, in most cases. It's spirits at work, whether it be generational curses that have gone down through the generational line to get the person to the point that they're almost totally gone when they're born now because it's gone down generationally, 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 that mental illness to where it's, it would take a major miracle to see somebody set free and change because it's so deeply embedded, the demon. But nevertheless, it still started with demon spirit. So so it is today in America that the gay or the queer lobbyists are putting pressure, or the mentally ill, that is, according to the APA, are putting pressure on people to follow their beliefs. That is, the demon behind and controlling the people are putting pressure on anybody who disapproves or disagrees with sodomy. You know, I remember I met a beautiful girl years ago before I married my wife, uh, before I even knew my wife, actually, and I was a Christian, a young, new Christian at that time, and she was a disc jockey on a radio station. I, I think it was a Christian station, but it might have been a secular station. I forget. I don't remember, but she claimed she was a Christian, and I began to have fellowship with her and had a lot of fellowship with her and hung out together with her. But as I got to know her, uh, I met her friend who also went to that uh, spirit-filled church and found out they'd been lovers in the past, another female, that is, whom I also had met in this spirit-filled church, too. Uh, And I realized that they weren't seeing each other at the very time there that I had met her and was started to meet and hang out with this other girl. Then I learned, uh, you know, from uh, the one I liked about her ongoing struggle with lesbianism. She said she she liked me and, and would not see the girl anymore. But you know what? She just couldn't couldn't stop. You know, this is one of the deepest pits that people could get in: is lesbianism, homosexuality. You know, homosexual lifestyle. Very de- deep pit. Very difficult for people to get out of. But anyway, she ended up after a period of time, and she ended up back with this other girl. Both of them continuing to go to spirit filled church and claiming that they're Christian. You know, uh, and this was years ago. Uh, it's a lot worse today, right? <laughs> I'm, I, at that time, was young in the Lord and didn't know what I knew today. But let's look at a scripture here, Leviticus 18.22. Let's, let's go look at a scripture about this particular subject because there's so much confusion on this subject in the church and so many Christians that they are accepting of this lifestyle. More and more and more of them are just falling right along and agreeing with it that it ain't so bad. And, you know, we don't want to say anything bad about it. We don't want to... Stand up and say anything because it's so bad, surely it's just another lifestyle. No, that's not what the Bible says. 
Leviticus 1822, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Now that word in the Hebrew language, when it when uh it's actually one of the strongest words in the Hebrew language when it comes to condemning something. Abomination. Okay? That's one of the actual strongest words. All right, when it comes to condemning something. It's not only wrong, it speaks of totally polluting and defiling yourself, okay? And, of course, you know, it's, it's sad that those girls were polluted. They were defiling themselves. And, you know, I didn't know when I met her that she was that way. I just thought she was a nice Christian girl, and, you know, we got to know each other. You know, I wasn't married. I was looking for a Christian wife, but, hey, I found out the truth. The Lord saved me for my for my wife now, you know, saved me from that. And I got a great Christian wife now, so praise God for for little sister Linda. But anyway, it it speaks of totally polluting and defiling yourself. This sin pollutes the mind and causes it to become reprobate. And a reprobate mind is a clouded and confused mind. It has demons. It's controlled by demons. And this mind no longer functions normally. It's a seared mind that cannot discern right and wrong properly. It's a mind, therefore, that believes and promotes lies. You know, there's a little, uh, there is little correct moral judgment in a reprobate mind. Morally, the mind is corrupt, and they don't judge morally properly. They don't judge things properly morally, okay? All right, so uh, we got a serious situation because here's what I think. If we continue as a nation to embrace this in the, in the church and out of the church, if we continue to do this, because I see it in both places. I see it in the church. I see it out of the church. I see it in the, uh, you know, in the unbelievers and the believers. I'll, I'll just give you an example of believers. My daughter, you know, she went to Oral Roberts University years ago. Uh, when not that many years ago, but anyway, when she was there, I'm, I'm not that old, but nevertheless, she did go a few years back. And when there was, uh, when she was there, she knew homosexual. Who claim to be Christians? In fact, she knows uh, one to this day in her life. She, uh, not in her life, but she knows one to this day, and they claim to be Christians. And I've met some of them too back then, you know. And, and they were homosexuals going to ORU, uh, O Roberts University, and claiming to be spirit-filled, born-again Christians. All right, deceived young people from Christians' homes partake of a filthy abomination. And you know, if you don't, let me just throw something at you here because this this is a uh, this is where I think a lot of Christians are erring here today. All right, I, if you don't condemn it, you're a partaker of it to some degree. You hear what I said? If you don't condemn it, you're a partaker of it. In other words, if you don't condemn something, you're in agreement with it. And so, if you don't condemn this this abomination that's going on, you know, you uh. You you really you you're in agreement with it because if you don't speak out of that, against it as sin, then you're in agreement. You can't you can't just walk the fence in this area, right? And that's what a lot of people are trying to do. They're trying to walk the fence in this area, but you know what? You can't do that. Okay, you you got to take a take a stand on this. You got to take a stand on a lot of things this day we're living in. You know, a lot of men oh they condemn homosexuality, but they love to watch lesbians get it on. You know, and that's that's perversion, okay? And you need deliverance if you like that sort of thing, you know? And, and so uh, what I see is a country headed for breakdown if we don't stop this foolishness, all right? And, and, and it's getting worse and worse. It's not getting better. Uh, I wish I could say it was. I wish I could see say, oh, like so many Christians are saying, we're going to have a great revival in America. Well, I, I'm sorry. That, that is not what I see going on at all. And some people say, oh, man, this prophecy of these prophetic people have been saying for for years all this great revival is going to happen in America. No, that's not what I see, although it would be nice if that were right. I see a great falling away, like it says in Second Thessalonians. That's what I see happening, and, and I, I, I wish it weren't that way. I wish we were going to see this great revival that TBN and uh, Daystar and all these people have said over the years, we're going to see this great, grand revival that's going to turn America around. Well, Okay, you know, I wish it was true. That's kind of like your little secret rapture that you say is going to happen any time now. Well, things keep getting worse, and we're still here. All right, I better be nice about that, right? Because I know some of you are hoping to go out tonight, you know. 
<laughs> well, I'm just going to tell you right up front, you're not going anywhere tonight. You're not going to go out of here tonight. The rapture is not happening tonight. I guarantee you that, okay? Uh, Matthew 19, 4. Let's read another scripture. I better change the subject, huh? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Who? They too. Man and woman. Not woman and woman. Not man and man. This is the way God made it. He made them male and female, and you will leave your parent, a man, and cleave to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. In other words, this is a dual meaning here. Okay? This is a dual meaning. It means that what God has joined together, being a man and a woman, not a man and a man, let no man change that or put that asunder. No, it also means, you know, don't get a divorce, right? But it also means here, don't let a man and a man get married. No man change this because this is what God ordained. This is the context of what he's saying here. In the beginning, he made man and woman. This is speaking against homosexuality here as well, okay? It's also talking about how the man will leave his parents and cleave to his wife, and they'll become one flesh. But it's also saying that it's man with a woman and woman with a man, not woman with a woman and man with a man. It's very clear here. That's the way God made it. That's the way God ordained it to be, right? Okay, very clear. According to the Word of God, he made us male and female, man and woman, to become one flesh. Not man and man, not woman and woman. And what God has joined together, being a man and a woman, not a man and a man, let no one change this. No one put it asunder. No one changed that. Okay? Dual meaning, right? All right. So, anyway, we, we're in a serious situation in our country. And when we depart from God's order, what do we have? We have chaos. We have breakdown. And that's what we're going through as a nation. We're going through a breakdown as a nation. And rampant divorces have caused a breakdown of our society in America. Kids from broken homes produce more broken homes unless Jesus show up shows up and brings a fix and a healing to these uh, broken children from broken homes. The erosion and breakdown of our society has only increased since the advent of the sexual revolution, the breakdown of morals in our society. You know, demons and devils have done us no favors, I'm telling you, folks, and they're continually fomenting breakdown in our society, in our personhood as well. More and more young people struggle with their sexuality today. You know, to be, you know, unisex, you know, unisex bathrooms coming up everywhere, you know. Uh, it's ridiculous, you know. Christian young people struggling with their sexuality. We're in the midst of a breakdown in our country, and this breakdown will bring America to its downfall. And it's over for us unless God is able to wake us out of our stupor, our drunkenness, and our sleep that we're in today, right? And that's what we're seeing today. We're seeing continual... Uh, Destruction of the Christian home. What is a Christian home? People don't even know what that is anymore. You know, because Christians are so dysfunctional today that they're raising their kids in dysfunctional homes. You may be a Christian, but they're so dysfunctional that you're not raising them in a Christian home. You don't have uh, Bible studies together with your children. You don't listen to your children. You don't uh, spend time nurturing them and filling them with the Word of God or raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What is a Christian home today? You know, Revelation 12, 9 really says what's happening and what has been happening. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who de which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Here it is right here. This is what's happening. This is what's been going on. It's still going on. It says, which deceiveth uh, part of the world, which deceiveth everybody except the Christians. That's not what it says. It says he deceiveth the whole world, okay? Do you ever think about that? You know, he didn't just say, well, he deceiveth everybody but the believers in Jesus. No, he deceiveth the whole world. Every person on the face of the earth has come under a measure of the deception of the enemy, right? Every person on the face of the earth, that's what it says. He deceived the whole world, not part of the world, the whole world. You know, we're finished. Listen, we're diminishing as a nation right now. 
Our greatness is waning. We are more known in the world for our filth and our perversions than we're known for our purity and our wholeness as a nation. Our people are bound today with pornography, with sexual uncleanness. You know, I have a uh, pastor friend from another country that uh, uh, moved to America. I was talking to uh, one of them today, and they were telling me, you know, they hate it in America. They they long for their country. America is, is awful. They don't like it here, you know, and they long for their country. I tell you, their country is more pure than America in many ways, you know, and we're in trouble as a nation. And I love America, but I don't love what we're becoming. I don't love what Satan is doing to our country, you know. Our people are bound today with pornography and sexual uncleanness. Respect, honor, and humility are rare, even in the churches today. What What is respect? What is honor? What is humility? Do, do we even know what those are anymore? Because we're in so rebellion. We're in such a rebellious house today. Rebellion is rampant. Nobody knows how to respect each other, honor, let alone the ministry, pastor, and church leaders. They're not honored today like they used to be and respected. Uh, leaders are no longer honored and respected. They're just one of the guys, or they're, or they're mistrusted. And some of them are rightly so, but not all of them, you know. And so where is respect? We don't respect each other. We don't, we don't respect God. Well, it sure wasn't that way in the early church, I'm telling you. But rebellion brings this type of behavior, and uh, our, our people are more and more and more in rebellion. You know, I do what I want. I want and I do what I want, and it's sad, and it's getting rough, and I don't like what I see, and I'm very concerned about it. And we don't honor God. We don't respect God, so why would we honor and respect each other, you know? So where there is no honor and respect for God and society, I mean, for, for God, then society breaks down, and that's what's happening. The church breaks down. We're failing as a people. People don't even respect themselves. Why? Because we're polluted by demons. Demons create a breakdown situation within people. You know, when when a lot of the, the people in ministry today are are, are uh, bound by pornography, well, well, what does that say then? If the people in the ministry, some of the people in ministry are bound by that, how many people in the church that aren't in the ministry are bound by pornography? Did I? Yeah, you know, I've just listened to a pastor sharing this this past week that there was a group gathering of southern baptist pastors and something like 80 percent or 90 percent uh said they had had problems with pornography well you know that's sad you know something's wrong here if that many of the pastors were having problems how many of the people in their churches are having problems i tell well i know southern baptists don't usually believe in deliverance and they're not baptized in the holy spirit that's a that's definitely a problem, but uh, still, these people claim to be in the ministry and they're, they're dealing with pornography. Something's wrong there, you know. Demons create this breakdown situation within people, and they eat away continually at everything that is good, that is godly, that is holy, that is pure, that is right. They're like these little parasite things that just chew away and chew away the good and the and the, the healthy things in a person's body until the body begins to break down. And that's why, you know, I do a parasite cleanse well, a physical parasite cleanse. Have you ever looked at those parasites on uh, in pictures? They look like little serpents, little devil, little snakes, you know? So, yeah, uh, in a sense that those little parasites that get in your organs, in your body, in your intestines, you know, that's kind of like devil. <laughs> you know, so I, I do a physical parasite cleanse myself as well. You know, as well as a as a casting out of parasites, amen. <laughs> we need help today, amen. We need help today. Our country is drunken on the wine of Babylon, and and the, unfortunately, much of the church lies there too, under the drunkenness of Babylon too. We're, and uh, you know, the Bible commands us to be sober minded, not drunk on Babylon, right? And so we, they're eating away, eating away at us. You know, all that is good, holy, pure, right, until the line between good and evil is no longer clear-cut clear cut and easy to see anymore for us. You know, until discernment is hard to find. I tell you, it's getting harder and harder to find true discernment in this country. 